Need to create an event on Facebook? Let me show you the best practices to make sure your event reaches as many people as possible. Hey, welcome to 5-Minute Social Media. If you've watched our videos before, thank you. If not, I'm all about teaching you how to do the best possible social media in the least amount of time. I'm a productivity nerd and I'm happy to share this with you today. How to create a Facebook event. I'm going to go through the steps so that you don't have to go back and fix things on your Facebook event later, which would definitely suck up more of your time. So the first thing you do is go to your Facebook page and click Events, and then Create Event. And here is where we are going to create everything. On a mobile device, you just open the Pages app and go to your page, and then click Event, and uh, you're right there in the creation screen. Now from here on out, I'm going to show you how to do it on a computer screen, but if you're doing this on your mobile device, just as easy to follow the steps. So first you're going to want to choose your photo or video if you've got one, but generally photos. And this has gotten much, much easier. It used to be that the photos would look different on mobile devices versus computers. Now they're pretty much the same. Make sure your photo is 1920 by 1080 uh, pixel wise. That's a 16 by 9 ratio. So you click here to change your photo or video and uh, you go through your pictures and you can pretty much choose something. So there's a picture of seafood that I just happen to have on my computer from a restaurant client. Your best bet for the photo is to just choose something that looks really nice. You don't want this to look like a, a, a nightclub flyer with words all over it. If you actually have a bunch of text, that will reduce your reach on Facebook. Then you're going to do your event name. Your event name should be short and sweet for a couple of reasons. One, so that it's easy to consume as somebody's scrolling through a feed, and two, because if it's too long, the beginning will get cut off. The third annual quarterly superstar challenge of seafood dinners and blah, blah, blah. Oh, I've already reached the character limit. So if I'm doing a seafood dinner, then I just want it to be, um, you know, seafood spectacular. Then I want to include a place or an address. If you are choosing a real place, then you can um, actually start to type in the address and it will come right up. So I'll put in Starbucks. Here's a bunch of Starbucks. Yeah, we'll do it at the Pike Place Market Starbucks, a seafood dinner. This makes no sense. You get the idea. Next up, you choose the frequency. You've got options. Occurs once, daily, weekly, or even custom, where you can actually go through and get more specific. Then you choose the start date and time. You know how dates and times work. Next up, you want to choose the category. I have created numerous Facebook events, and sometimes there's just not a category that fits, and it's super annoying, but you have this none option if that is the case. Do choose a category, though, if you can, because, uh, for example, for our seafood thing, we'll choose food, because it will show to the event to people nearby who have expressed interest in other food-related events. The description is where you put all of the information that you want. But before you start filling it with a ton of stuff, just know that people will only see the first couple of lines unless they click see more. So you don't want to start off saying, okay guys, here's what we're doing this year and I'm super excited. That's just wasted words. We are throwing a spectacular seafood dinner that you won't want to miss. Tickets are only $8. Don't know if I want to go to the $8 seafood dinner. <laughs> but put the most important info up front, and then you can come down here and you can type a ton of information of whatever you want to be in there. Keywords. This is not like keywords on WordPress blogs and YouTube videos where you can almost type in whatever you want. You have to uh, be very specific at things that they actually have in there. So for example, I just put in seafood. Seafood is not an option. I can't save it. So you might find some things that fit there um, and you might not find anything that works. There we go. Dinner. I can do that. If it's kid friendly. You can check that it's kid friendly. This is where you add the link to your ticketing website. Just below that, this is where you can add co-hosts. So maybe I am co-hosting this and then meanwhile a winery um, yeah, or maybe Wine Spectator is sponsoring it. So I can have them as a co-host. Now, they're going to have to approve this, but if you have other co-hosts and vendors, they can also help promote the event. So that's where you would put that. And then finally, the posting restrictions. How do you want to set this up? The most open is where anyone can post in your event. If somebody flags something or reports it to Facebook, then it has to be approved. 
or anyone can post, all posts must be approved, or only hosts can post. It's nice to keep it open because sometimes your guests will post in there and invite other friends. So you decide what's best for you. I'd suggest starting with anyone can post, and then you can make it more restrictive as you go if you have any problems. And finally, do you want to or not want to display the guest list? So people like to see if anyone they know is coming, so this is kind of a personal preference. You can decide which one you want. Oh, let me show you this too. If you've got sponsors or people appearing or anything like that, you can actually tag them in the description. So we can say proud to welcome Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> Yay! He's going to talk about Oldsmobiles. Is that the one he does car commercials for? I forget. Finally, you can uh, boost the event if you're going to do that now, or you could wait. You can save it as a draft if other people want to look at it to approve it, uh, or you can publish it right away or schedule it to be published. After your event is up, start inviting people. There are some more tricks, though, that are very helpful to make sure your Facebook event actually reaches people. I've got another video about 10 tips to make sure your Facebook event actually works, and I've got the link down in the comments. It would be great if you check that out as well to help your Facebook event. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you took a second to click like down below. That's how we grow the channel. If you really, really enjoyed it, maybe subscribe because we're going to be doing lots more videos about how to do the best possible social media in the least amount of time. Thank you for watching 5-Minute Social Media.